My name is Katie Shank. Uh, could you tell us your name? My name is Perry King. All right. Um, so, Perry, could you tell us what is your relationship to Adams Morgan? Well, I first came to D.C. in 1977. I'm from North Carolina originally. And I came here back, and I went, went back to finish school in North Carolina, and I came here in 78 to uh, go to Howard School of Social Work. And I ended up staying in D.C. all that time. So I've had a lot of experience in D.C. Uh, I've been a street vendor while I was working my way through grad school. And I actually was uh, worked on the corner of 18th and Columbia where I learned Spanish. Now, what was special then? I'll tell you what was special. The ginkgo trees. The ginkgo trees used to line Adams Morgan big time. These ginkgo trees, by the way, are the, only, the living plants left over from the era of the dinosaurs. I don't know if a lot of people know that. They, have a, they don't have a spine in the middle. They have a fan-shaped leaf. They're more primitive than the leaves with the, with the, with the spine in them, if you will. So and they've survived. There's also the only living thing that survived the Hiroshima bomb, bomb blast was a ginkgo tree. But they did not survive Adams Morgan because some fool had the idea to cut the trees down so we could widen the parking areas, okay, or whatever they did. And I was, I didn't even know about it. If I'd have known about it, I would have organized a tree sit-in. I would have climbed up. There's one tree I used to sit under when I was a street vendor as a young man, and I had a relationship with that tree. And to just to see it gone, with, I didn't even hear about a public hearing or anything. They were going to cut down the trees. One day they were gone almost, you know. And I said, what? You know, so, you know, um, I'm pissed. I'm still pissed about it. Every time I think about it, I get really pissed about it. Um, so that's the one memory that's special to me. And then uh, to top that off, to add insult to injury, they want to put a condo on the plaza where I've been coming to the farmer's market for almost 40 years. Mike Tabor and Esther Siegel have been running the farmer's market there for, since the 70s, and they want to put a condo there. Isn't that great? Uh, there's no planning, uh, there's no quality of life thinking in this, it's just pure, oh, there's a piece of land, let's put a condo up. This area needs public space. We need public space, and they're putting condos on our public space. Same thing is happening in other parts of D.C., Bruce Monroe Park. Those people are having to fight to keep condo development out of their public park. Over in Brookland, the McMillan Reservoir Project, they want to put condos there. If we let them, we'll have no public space. They'll put a condo here in Calorama Park. Why not? It's an empty space. So anyway, there's a lot I'm really pissed about, but old Adams Morgan was special. You had economic diversity. You had ethnic diversity. When I first came here as a Southern boy from North Carolina, I got educated. I met Ethiopians. I met Ghanans. I met Latinos of all persuasions, South Americans, Europeans, Asians. And I lived and worked with them. And it's really, it's a special place. Adams Morgan with its economic diversity uh, and its ethnic diversity well, it was, was a special place. Now I think it's becoming a little bit like maybe, I don't know, San Fran tourists or something. You know, it's just kind of really kind of glitched different now. What can I say? Oh, I tell you this, Johnny Winter. We saw rock and roll legend Johnny Winter play at the Ontario Theater. That was used to be like live music right here on, I mean, big time live music. We still have really good live music, but this was like big names. I understand uh, uh, several big names have played at the old Ontario Theater. I saw the color purple there. I went to see the color purple at the Ontario Theater. That was a really quite experience because the crowd was really into it and everybody was responding emotionally to it. It was something. So it was quite an amazing experience. I got that's enough. Again. Oh, and I, I talked about the balloon man too. Uh, I'm trying to find some people. Would you? How long you been in D.C., Miss? Do you ever you remember the balloon man? Well, <laughs> I don't know his name. Do you remember the guy? Okay, stood at the 18th in Columbia all day long with a really loud voice. He would say, "Make the lovely ladies happy. Make the children happy. They're big. They're beautiful balloons. And when the children are happy, everyone is happy." He said that over and over and over, all day long. It was like part of the atmosphere was the balloon man. You remember that? Yeah, wasn't that great? He had yeah, I had some balloons bought for me from the balloon man. 
I think everybody could tell that story. He was the balloon man. He was like uh, Adams Morgan's feature. And now what about the rhythm man? Do you remember the rhythm man? He was a dancer who used to hustle people dancing on the street. He used to, you know, kind of get money. It's a uh, tap dancing. Oh, I, there were a couple of those in town. Yeah, yeah. Um, because some of them, I think when I was working with the Black Repertory, we did a, a children's program. Uh huh. And we got all of them to come there and teach the kids and to do a performance. Hmm. Anyway, I understand he used to, he taught Janae who used to tap dance on the bar at La Trek Cafe. He was famous act they did. He did a, he did a little act on, uh, on weekends. He did a tap dance on the bar, New Orleans style, old fashioned tap dancing on the bar. Right, right, it's changed. The, the picture is still there of uh, uh, La Tru uh, Toulouse La Trek, the picture, is, that's, yeah, the mural is still there. Yeah, but that used to be, the original was Cafe La Trek and it was a great spot. You know, it was a great little live spot. Uh, yeah, a lot of memories. <laughs> what can I say? That was yeah. good, but you know what, what I'd like for you to, to share with Katie is the people don't know that the Ontario Movie Theater was like an elite special place like the Kennedy Center. You know, what? Like the movies came out, it wasn't it wasn't like a neighborhood movie theater. It was a very special theater to tell somebody who went to the Ontario Okay, and it declined in the 80s, of course. In the 80s, the area became pretty seedy, really. And then in the in the 90s, too, was a big, uh, well, Columbia Heights especially. I actually lived in Columbia Heights during the crack era. I was at 14th and Irving. But the crack wars in the 90s really changed uh, the neighborhood, I think, went down and became known as, you know, murder capital and all that stuff. So it was pretty rough here at that time. It wasn't as, as nice as the 80s. 80s was nice. Cool Disco Dan. <laughs> Remember that, don't you? Yes. Oh, boy. You go to Mr. Henry? I've been, I went to all the places like that, Mr. Henry. I played music a lot of these places. I'm a musician myself. Can you talk about that? Well, I'm mostly a street musician, but I've had played in clubs, but I have a hobby. I have a job. I'm a social worker by career and still work full time, but I've always loved to go out on the street and play music with my amplifier. And once in a while, I'd get a little gig in a restaurant or something. Nothing big time. But uh, I've done that a lot around here, too. Uh, all kinds of music. Mostly in uh, Georgetown, though, is where I had a little gig in the cafe and stuff. Yeah, so. But um, don't see many street musicians anymore like we used to. Used to be, the streets used to be full of street musicians. And that created a nice atmosphere, especially in Georgetown. And some, sometimes in Adams Morgan, too, there were a lot more people out, you know, just, you know, kind of, it lends a kind of relaxed feel. It's like New Orleans, you know what I mean? When people are out playing music, it creates a vibe. Uh, yeah, but I think the vibe has changed a lot. I got to embrace it like it is because it's still, you know, it's still evolving and we, the people who are here make it what it is. I am worried about the economic diversity, what happens when uh, a neighborhood uh, I will credit Jubilee Housing, whom I've known a long time and done some volunteer work with. They've kept, to uh, some extent, that's a nonprofit that is that is uh, along with the uh, All Souls Church, and their housing ministries have kept some low-income housing in Adams Morgan. But there's not much low-income housing left, and I think that's a problem because that used to be that. That's what makes a neighborhood really the the, the economic diversity makes a neighborhood really thrive. You know. When it, once it gets high scale, you just get all these glitzy corporate things in with no soul. You know what I mean? That's what you get, and you get gated communities. But when you have economic diversity, you have a real vibrant neighborhood. You know. And, but that's why we need the plaza. I've been going to the farmers market. I've been buying flowers there. I've been buying bread there for like since 1978. <laughs> and they want to put a condo there. God bless them. <laughs> do you think there's anything we can do to like protect Well, I was just telling Tara, who said it's in appeals now. And so if we can mobilize a big, op I don't know how how to advocate for the courts. I'll leave that. I, I, if we have a demonstration, I'll come to it. You know, I don't know, but it's about, it's, I heard it was on appeal now. So they're still trying to appeal the plaza. And they have something up there right now, which I'm going to ride my bike by 
to pro protest you know the plaza. Yeah, I think that was on the news, wasn't it? They somebody somehow something out about the protest. So anyway, I'll end up by saying um, one day a long time ago, I remember walking down Park Road and I remember how many different people, it was those days there was a Vietnamese community that lived on Park Road and I, and I was thinking about how many different of the world's people that I saw on Park Road. I was just walking home one day on Park Road and I, I had experience of joy just feeling glad that I had moved in this neighborhood and had, had been lived my life in D.C. So I'll leave with that. Thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. all of those memories. With all us. right, ma'am.